So let's talk about this three liter Duramax, the interesting drive system we have here. Yeah, so Chris, on the, on the back end of our inline six for the uh, three liter Duramax, it's going in the next gen Silverado. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a rear timing system mm -hmm. um, off of the off of the crankshaft here. We have uh, we go up to our high pressure fuel pump, which is driven right off of the crank. From there, we have another uh, chain that comes up and drives our camshafts. Mm -hmm. um, here we have uh, also off of the main. Uh, crankshaft we come down and we use uh, a wet belt the sump is down here with oil and the wet belt is always covered in oil um, and it runs our uh, oil pump down here mm -hmm. the oil pump is a variable displacement oil pump for efficiency reasons okay so we pump the amount of oil we need when we need it and right. so minimize the amount of waste when we don't um, and you said that belt has about 150,000 mile service life? Is the belt is 150,000 mile service life, which okay. is full useful life. Mm -hmm. um, that's the minimum it's going to go. Right. So uh, beyond that, the, the service on it is, is not that difficult. Um, uh, a cover, uh, first the, the transmission just has to be backed off, the bell housing, and then there's a, a cover that comes off and you can service it without uh, touching the timing system at all. Okay. Um, the oil pump also is serviceable without touching the belt or the timing system uh, underneath through the uh, oil pan if, if required. Okay, so from the bottom up we've got the oil pump drive right yep, there. Right mm -hmm. here. Yep. Yep. And then the uh, chain up here to the high pressure fuel pump, which mm -hmm. we should probably talk about. And then we'll, we come up to the intake and, and uh, exhaust can. And we were saying that basically anything back here the chains are are permanent designed for yes. permanent there's no there's no uh, service maintenance required on the chains okay the and so the only thing is is that belt that we discussed earlier um, but uh, that is accessed by simply dropping the transmission to access that belt um, which shouldn't be any any more of a challenge if, if anything less than challenge than than uh, servicing something like that from the front of the engine where the... Yeah, there are several uh, uh, other competitors have a full belt to do the entire timing system, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, can be, you know, devastating when the belt goes on that. Yeah. Um, if, if or when the belt would ever go on this, you know, well beyond 150,000 miles, um, you, would, you would be warned with, uh, you know, uh, the appropriate uh, diagnostics and you'd be able to stop. Our fuel pump is uh, uh, 2,500 bar fuel pump, so we deliver at 36,250 psi. Okay. Fuel injection pressure maximum. Um, it's a twin. It's a twin piston pump, and runs up, sends the fuel to a common uh, common rail sure. injection system. Mm -hmm. um, the injectors uh, are top dead center, really at the top of each each piston. Low compression ratio, 15 to 1, helps us on emissions. Um, our turbocharger is what helps us get our power so quickly. Electronically controlled VGT turbocharger gives us 29 pounds of boost. Um, we have roller bearings in here, which mm -hmm. is new for us. Um, spins up to 175,000 RPM. There were journal bearings before? Yeah, sleep, okay. sleep bearings, yeah. Out of the turbocharger, we have a charge air cooler. It's a water charge air cooler. Okay. A very efficient little guy. Um, and also, if you notice the spacing of, because it's a clean sheet design, we were able to minimize the the length of the runs of all the air uh, in and out of the engine. So okay. So we've got a short column of air to compress, and this is what gives us that quick spin up and that quick power. Makes sense. Um, it's the, and you know, a lot of air to air uh, coolers will be on the front of the, of the vehicle, so now you've got this big long column of air that has to come out, right? And and you have to you have to compress the whole thing first before you get it to the engine. This design, and this is a liquid air. And this is yeah, this is liquid air. Mm -hmm. Yep. So out of the uh, uh, charge air cooler, we come down here through the throttle body, and we go into the um, uh, in. It, uh, intake system here. Mm -hmm. We have a swirl valve actuator, which is, goes on all of the intake runners into the, each cylinder. We have two runners. Uh, one of the two runners on each one of the cylinders has a small flap on it. So at low flow, low load conditions, we like to have a little more energy from the air getting into the piston to help uh, mix up 
the air and fuel to atomize it better. Okay. By turning this flapper valve down at low uh, low flow, low load conditions, we bias the air going into the cylinder chamber and we get a swirl. So that's why it's called the swirl valve. Okay. Um, and and this is a it's an enabler for helping emissions um, and for better combustion. We talked a little bit earlier about our fuel system in, in injection. Uh, mm -hmm. Class leading uh, 2500 bar, 36,250 psi. That's huge. Um, we use uh, our injectors are, are really the latest injectors available from Denso. They're uh, G3.5S. Let's talk about uh, the control system on those injectors. We are able to pulse up to 10 injections per cylinder event. Um, obviously, we have pre top dead center pulses, which help shape the combustion shape for noise, obviously, mm -hmm. and for power and emission. Um, we also can do post injections, which we use for uh, regeneration and for emission as well. Awesome. Uh, we have uh, ceramic glow plugs. Ceramic glow plugs warm up hotter than uh, metallic glow plugs, and they have better, better life. Another aspect on the engine which gives us our great fuel economy is our active thermal management. So this right here is our rotary valve. This is a uh, new system that we have on our diesel engine this year. Okay. The, the rotary valve, in essence, uh, is a very high-tech uh, thermostat. Uh -huh. um, but what does it allow us to do? Okay, mm -hmm. It allows us to control the flow. It allows us to control where the warm liquid goes and 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 how we can cool and heat things up indifferently. So we use oh. it differently in cold startup uh, than we do when it's hot. So if we set it to the head, we've optimized all of the all of the water channels so that everything gets cooled equally. Okay, that's all taken care of there. But what what that allows us to do is that when it is cold. We, we don't send coolant to some areas that don't need it, but we send more of the hot coolant to the areas that need to heat up. Gotcha. Like okay. the head. So how yeah. it, it function? you start from zero flow. Mm -hmm. So the engine is cold, there is no flow, so everything is warming up. And then we keep the block valve closed. So we, we start to flow just the, the cylinder head, which is the, 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 the first critical. Mm -hmm. And then only when the block becomes critical, we open the gates to the block. Okay. So, and this we are saving pumping effect of, of the, of the mm -hmm. waters. Interesting. And then, and then once, once the water is now warm going through the engine, we'll take that, we'll send it back to the transmission oil cooler. We have a separate circuit to send it back there. And then we send it to our... Uh, we have also our engine oil cooler, which we use to warm up when it's cold and to cool off when it's hot. So um, we also have a separate circuit for the cabin heat, so we can we can send more heat to the cabin at the coldest times as well. Um, wow! And and then we can always keep constant the temperature of the engine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it will uh, run always hot, means always friction lower level. Exactly. So. In it, our exhaust system needs to stay hot to be most efficient for emission. Mm -hmm. So when you're running low load down the road at 70 miles an hour, um, the engine's really not doing enough work to keep it hot. So what we're able to do by by lowering the flow down, we can get the engine running a bit hotter, closer, better to its efficiency point, and better for the emission system. Gotcha. This is what allows us to get great fuel economy. Other, other manufacturers might have to be uh, injecting more fuel to keep the after treatment hot mm. so you're using your fuel on that we're trying to give that back to the customer the DOC which is the diesel oxidation catalyst mm -hmm. we bring that up here close it needs to stay hot so close up here out of the turbo we have less heat loss and we get more heat into the DOC and less need to uh, burn additional fuel to get it hot hmm. once this gets up to temperature our efficiency on the emission side uh, goes up and we meet our emissions quicker so we can get out of warm-up mode sooner and we can get get everybody to a uh, better fuel economy situation here's our diesel exhaust uh, I'm, I'm sorry our diesel, uh, our DEF injector, diesel exhaust fluid injector. Okay. Um, this here is new for the uh, three liter Duramax. Um, it is uh, the particulate filter, so it's the DPF, but it is also an SCR, a selective catalyst uh, 
as well. So they're combined, we call it the SCRF. Okay. Um, this has uh, a lot of features in it. Like every uh, filter, diesel filter, we have a delta pressure sensor, so we know when the filter is getting too filled up and we have to have a regen. Um, the, we perform regens, not with a separate hydrocarbon injector, but we do post injections, some of those 10 pulses that I talked about. Mm -hmm. We do post injections to slip fuel uh, into the exhaust to light off the, the, uh, the DPF to burn okay. out and do the regeneration. Now, isn't that assembly in other vehicles typically underneath the vehicle? It's not up next to the engine? Exactly. And why is that? Because of the architecture of the engine, a V engine, there's one, there's no, no room, room for to it. package it. Right. And then, and by us being able to bring it up here closer, we have, like I said, we get more it's heat. Be more efficient. Right. right. Okay. So there, and to, to that end, and you look under the hood, you're going to see that the components around this, this is a very hot item, right? Yeah. Uh, the components around it, we've, we, we have to shield with some moon tape or aluminum tape in the right, in the right spots. Mm -hmm. um, and we give clearance for it around under hood. Mm -hmm. um, another advantage that we have on our exhaust system that is helping our uh, emission and our, our fuel economy, we have a low pressure EGR, low pressure cooler, and this is this. Uh, we also have a new uh, actuator here, which is an exhaust throttle valve. The exhaust throttle valve is at low low load, low flow conditions. Mm -hmm. we, we close that off, it provides back pressure and pushes the uh, exhaust up through the cooler, through the low pressure EGR, into the turbo, and then it gets reburned. The good, the great thing about this is, this is done after the turbo, so we don't take away any, any uh, energy away from the turbo to spin up like a high pressure EGR does. So on heat up, we use mo mostly high pressure EGR once we're hot. Then we transition and use low pressure as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. Which is um, also clean gas. Yeah. So you are recirculating uh, after the filter, so the gas is clean from, right. from the circuit. Right. And so what? It, so for the cooler, other manufacturers, other diesels, a long time ago, um, have had issues with clogging uh, coolers. Right. Well, now we're we're after the filter, so we we really minimize the amount of uh, soot and buildup that can happen inside the cooler. Now we're driving in the three liter Duramax and uh, at highway speeds it's almost silent. You have a little bit of engine noise under, under throttle, but especially at cruise, um, it's virtually silent. There's, there's uh, no distinguishing between a diesel and a gas uh, once you get to highway speeds. Backed by a 10-speed automatic transmission, the truck shifts smoothly and delivers good power off idle. With stiff competition from Ram's re-engineered EcoDiesel and Ford's PowerStruck 3.0 diesel, Chevy has their work cut out for them, but the GM faithful will not be disappointed with this new truck.